In short, if you're looking for my quick opinion, this is a nice, affordable calligraphy pen. I use it in many of my own videos. I think it has a number of benefits, but it does also have some drawbacks, and I'll try to get into each one as I go through this video. It's sold individually as well as in sets. At the time of this filming, there are currently six sizes available. This set I'm showing here today includes four sizes. The red one is 1.5 millimeters. The orange is 2.4. The green is 3.8. And the blue is 6.0. They are color-coded to help you easily identify which one is which. Each of the pens comes in a simple plastic package and includes a few accessories. This is the pen itself a matching cap, a tool to help clean it out, two ink cartridges, and this thin piece of plastic to help clean out the nib. The pen itself is fairly long, it's lightweight, pretty well balanced. It has a tapered shape to it. It is a bit frustrating, you have no place to put the cap because the, the back is tapered, so the cap falls right off. So you're gonna have to keep that separate when you're using it. The pen itself does disassemble easily. It can be unscrewed, you can use this to help flush out any debris that's in there. The assembly of this is pretty straightforward. The entire nib assembly actually twists out of the front. There's a small o-ring that seals it. It's held in place with just a friction fit. The nib can also be pulled out. One of the attractions of having this pen are these nibs can be hacked and that makes it more versatile than some of the other pens out there. You can take the cartridge and the cartridge is simply pressed into the nib assembly. When these become empty, they can be refilled. If you have a syringe with a blunt tip needle, you can use that to refill these cartridges. Some ink bottles, you can also thread a blunt needle right onto the tip of them and that makes it easy to refill as well. These cartridges are transparent, so if you're refilling them, it makes it easy to see how much ink you have left and when it's time to refill. If the ink becomes dried out in the tip, that's where this plastic piece comes in handy. The nib is actually made out of two parallel plates of metal. That's why it's called the parallel pen. If this nib becomes clogged, you just take this plastic that's included and slide it in between the two sections here, and it pushes out any ink that's clogged in there. That gets rid of any dried out ink and helps clean out the nib. Each of the nibs is labeled with the size right on the plastic. That is a bit hard to read because it's molded in the same color and pretty small. The caps are also color coordinated and labeled with the size. I believe these used to come with convergers on previous models. Now they include just this squeeze bulb to help you flush it out. This is too large to fit into the handle, but it is sealed tight enough that in a squeeze you could actually put ink in this. It'll hold more volume than the cartridges that are included and most converters that you can fit in the body. Although that's not convenient and won't look good, you could use it in a pinch to put down some color and a lot of it if necessary. Because of its design, its easy disassembly, this cleaning tool, as well as the squeeze bulb, it's a fairly easy pen to keep clean and maintain. The ink does dry up in it pretty often and because of the width of the nibs it can pick up fibers from the paper and become clogged. So you do actually end up using the cleaning tool more often than you might think. The parallel pens do use a lot of ink and unless you're using a coated paper the ink does bleed. I often use these as dip pens. That gives me the benefit of being able to quickly switch out colors as well as lay down less ink than the default cartridge will. This is the 1.5 millimeter size. If it's used on edge, it actually lays down a very fine line. If you use it full width, that's the full 1.5. You can use it at multiple angles, of course, and you can also use the edge for a very thin line. This is the 2.4. You have to be very careful to fully press this nib down, otherwise it will streak and create different widths. Used on edge, it creates a line just as thin as the, the other one. At 45, then straight on flat. I already have some red color in here, so if you dip it, for example, into black, 
it'll write in black and then it'll slowly fade into the red. This is the 3.8. Sometimes it will skip. You will have to press firmly. I've noticed it takes a little time for these nibs to wear in a little bit and then they write a little smoother. So when it's brand new, sometimes it does streak like that. Once again, on edge, you can create a very thin line, working at angles, as well as flat. And then lastly, the six millimeter. This is a rather wide nib. So very useful for creating much larger size designs quickly. This nib is nice and wide, but it still writes a very thin line when you're on edge. Because of the way the tip of this is curved, it's not flat. If you look very carefully, you'll see the tip of these nibs is actually has a little curve to it. That allows you to make angled contact with the paper, but you do have to be careful to make sure that the, the part with the ink actually makes contact with your sheet, otherwise it will not write. It also does have the small grooves you see in the front, give it this ability to create interesting line strokes when you go really fast. If you go slow, it lays down a solid line, but if you go fast, you start getting multi-line strokes. And this is a technique that you can hack further and you can cut deeper into those using a Dremel tool or file into them in some way. That'll give you even more unique strokes if that's what you're looking for. As I said earlier, this pen nib is often hacked by people, meaning it's cut into different shapes. I have it cut into an angle on this pen and this works great for Arabic calligraphy, as you can see in some of my other videos. And um, if you're interested in doing that, I'll post a video on the process, how to cut your nib at an angle. And uh, again, there are many different techniques for doing that, everything from sanding to using Dremel tools. You can create um, angled nibs as well as put cuts into the nibs for creating multi-line strokes. So I'm often using it to write Arabic script. The metal nib can also be pulled out and removed if you want to reshape it or to replace it. I don't think Pilot sells replaceable nibs, so if you damage it, you might end up buying a new pen. Cost-wise, these are pretty reasonably priced. They go for about $10 a piece in the US, and a set of four can be purchased for about $25 to $30, which works out to a little bit less per piece. I have a number of videos showing these being used for calligraphy. So here I'm gonna do a quick illustration just to demonstrate the multimedia usage that this pen has. First, I wanna just lay down a light pencil sketch just to get some proportions and uh, outline for what I'm thinking. This is a simple and common idea for modern architectural design. It includes, I wanted to just show something that includes both fine line and broad stroke work. So you can see that uh, the pen is useful for putting down details as well as broad strokes of color. I'm using a little bit of ink and watering it down just to create a very light wash. 
I've actually used these pens successfully with mixed media. So if you wanted to mix some watercolors, you could use gouache. The main thing is whatever media you use has to be thin enough that it's not going to clog. So as long as you blend the as long as you blend the pigment and water it down enough, you can lay down a fairly thick color as long as it doesn't have any grit to it that's going to end up clogging the plates in the pen. Um, so I'm using this blue just to put a little bit of uh, blue in the sky. This will serve as the background. And um, and then uh, I'm taking some darker black and olive green. using this to establish some ground and foreground. Now I am going ahead and darkening in the outline of the, uh, the structure using the edge of the pen. So although I'm using the widest nib here, the six millimeter, I'm able to put down a fairly thin line and I can quickly switch back to the wide strove and fill in some detail as well. And block in some wider sections of color. Because you have the flexibility of adding different media to this, if you're working on a piece, say, made out of watercolor or gouache, you'd be able to stay in the same medium without having to switch to pen and ink, which can sometimes create variation in gloss and texture in your final piece. By staying in the same media, you can maintain the same texture. So even though the, um, the nib already has some black in it, I'm dipping it into the blue and that creates the shade variation. The uh, pen does actually, as I mentioned earlier, the pen does a little bit of color mixing. So depending on what ink was added first, which one was added second, you'll actually have a flow of one color to the next and uh, that can help make gradual transitions between colors. Just want to lay down some shadow detail and add some contrast in the foreground. Lay down some more green for the ground. Some of these quick strokes start out as solid and then break out into multi streaks. Here I just want to squiggle in a few shapes, act as some trees and foliage.
go back in using the fine edge, put in the uh, illusion of some detail, and uh, that about wraps it up. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're looking for places that sell these, I'll put some links in the description box below that you can use to find them. All right, that's my review of this pen. I hope you found it useful. Please be sure to subscribe and share with others. I'll see you next time. God bless.